The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com, and I'm back in one of my favorite places. A wheat field. We're here at the Fallings Research Farm. I'm joined by Joanna Fallings. She's the cereal specialist for the Ministry of Agriculture and Food. We've been here a couple times. You maybe recall that this is where we're looking at the differences in drill technology. And we have three different, four different drills here. Lots of stuff going on. But one of the main things that we're really investigating is, is how do we get the wheat crop to be more uniform? So Joanna, what are we seeing here? Yeah, so it's really interesting. So I'm standing in the sunflower drill here. We've got 10 inch rows and you can see, you know, we don't have a lot of canopy closure. There's some spacing uh, and differences in staging between plants. We've also got some gaps. But then when you look to where Peter's standing right now, you can see that plants are very, very consistent across the road. They're all at the same stage. And so it'll be really interesting to see how that carries through to harvest and whether or not that makes a difference at uh, harvest time. Yep, and what's cool is that we have like the sunflower drill doesn't have cedar force. I'm in cedar force, but we have the John Deere without cedar force. We have a Borgo drill here with the same technology as cedar force with that, that automatic down pressure. One of the most interesting things as we look across these plots is where we have the cedar force. And this is corn stalks, clearly yep. corn silage. Man, we still get a stand with the cedar force, whereas with the John Deere drill without cedar force, once it's on that corn row, the stand really tends to fall apart. So that, uh, we didn't expect that, but it's, it is really cool technology. And then the second thing, of course, is row width. And so you can quite clearly see that, that Joanna's got some issues in terms <laughs> of, of the canopy there, but, but what's intriguing in this row width study is we've looked at row widths over, over time, but some excellent research coming out of Michigan State U University with, uh, with Manny and Dennis uh, and the wheat program there. Very cool stuff. They have two years of data and the yield increase to narrower rows is huge, right? Like yep. when they went from seven and a half inch rows to, to 10 inch rows, or pardon me, from five inch rows rather, from five inch rows to seven and a half inch rows, there was a 10 bushel per acre yield difference. When Huge. they went from five inch to 15, there was 27 bushels per acre. We've never seen those kind of yield differences. Not in Ontario. <laughs> no, nope, but it really is interesting in terms of how planting date plays with that, right Joanna? Yeah, so the difference is there is that the earlier planted uh, the crop was, we didn't see as much of a yield benefit to those narrower rows. We didn't seem to get that jump on yield, but where it's really interesting is when we go later planting, we're not as getting as much growth and development in the fall. And so those narrow rows really made a difference in terms of yield on those years where we're planting later. Yep. So that's really cool stuff coming out of Michigan. And we're looking forward to seeing what the year 2021 brings us. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, the early planted stuff, they still got some yield increase to the narrow rows. And this is early planted wheat. I'd expect September a 16. yield increase for sure, but it's much reduced over that later planted wheat, which is yeah, just, just another thing to rattle through your brain. Of course, how do you know if you're gonna plant early or late? So if narrow rows pay, we gotta go there, but how we get there is a whole nother thing. Last on this, weed control. What about, what about this, Joanna? Like, gosh, I think there's lots of space where you're standing for my weeds to grow. Exactly, and that's what, what's been really interesting at this site is we can really see the value in narrow rows in terms of weed control. We know wheat is super competitive, but there's lots of opportunity in these wider rows. If you look around here, we've got some shepherd's purse, we've got chickweed coming through, and those winter annuals can be really challenging to control. They're getting much bigger. You know, I know it's only April the 4th or 5th here today, uh, but the temperatures are ideal and those annuals are gonna really take off. So it's really, really critical to get out into your fields and see what, you know, weed control pressure you have there, especially in these wider rows. Compared to where Peter's standing, you know, there's, there's really not a whole lot that we have going on in those narrow rows. So it's very, very critical in terms of weed control timing to get out and know exactly what it is that you're dealing with. Yeah, and what really, I mean, 90% weed control. We can get 90% weed control from a canopy and that's why wheat tends to be more competitive often because it builds that canopy early, but better canopy here than there. And by the way, talk about an opportunity this year. It's April the 5th, it's dry. 
It's warm. You can actually go spray those winter annuals and, and do it. Get out and spray those winter annuals because they haven't bolted. They haven't gone to flower. Now is when we start to set yield. Now is when weed control actually pays the most. So this is an incredible opportunity. Whether you're seven and a half or 10, you have shepherd's purse or chickweed or dandelions. Canada fleabane. Yeah, any of those stinking things. Yeah. Just, just get them out of, the, out of the wheat crop. They're all bad. With that, we're going to be back again, right, Joanna? We're yep. going to come back? We're going to keep track of this site right through to harvest. We'll be back hopefully in a couple of weeks. We're going to see where things are at. And if we've got some exciting things to show you, uh, we'll definitely keep you in the loop. Absolutely. Cool. So join us again. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, Joanna Fallings, the Sierra Specialist of Ministry of Agriculture and Food. And we will be back.